In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Like I said, uh, this is the, thy word is truth. This is the ministry of um, Rivers of Living Water, Pastor Susie and Toon, daughter of the Most High. We speak today about some topic that I've never ever thought that I will uh, be able to understand it well to teach it. Uh, so we're talking here about the 70 weeks of uh, Daniel and the 70 week prophecy. We're going to speak about the sealed book and a lot of things, but maybe we focus on whatever uh, you can take. Well, this is here the... Um, and why is that related to the topic of the war that we are in? Because here this is not a book of history. If it's not related to the time, the prophecy is sealed for years and years. The book of the sealed book. You think the sealed book is the, the book of um, Revelation, but I'm going to tell you that the sealed book is the book of uh, Daniel. And his 70 weeks prophecy is totally and completely nowadays topic. Uh, and uh, two liter tea. Thank you, well. Two liter. Thank you. You make it too full. Two liter. Right. Uh, so what happened here is the Jews delete that book of prophecy. It's not into the book of the prophets. You know the the Hebrew Bible is divided into three parts. The the prophets. Uh, uh, Daniel is not one of the prophets, in even with all the secrets that he has in his book. And there is a reason for it, a very important reason. Uh, he's, they're putting it into the Katubin. Katubin, it means like the written book. Mm. And the reason is because God is giving us an exact, you know, I'm just going to go wherever the, the Lord will flow because a lot of things to speak. But I'll go with what is more important. Mm -hmm. So God give us a very exact time into the book of prophecy of Daniel when the Messiah will come, his first coming. Mm -hmm. Though in the second coming, he said it's a knowledge, the disciple asked him, you know, when, but he didn't give them an exact answer. He gave a lot of things that for us to look, but into the first coming of the Messiah, it was so precise that no one can deny it. And that's the main reason that the book of Daniel is deleted from the ca canon of the Jewish. And for me here, I'm just talking to the Jews first. Look at that book into another way because you deny it because of the first coming of the Messiah. Well, just put into your uh, you know, thinking that maybe Jesus is the Messiah and drop a little bit that enmity that you have against him and recalculate, you know, when... Um, you go drive a car and then your GPS, you lost the way and then they say a route, a route recalculate and they take you to another way. So I'm just really asking you today to route recalculate. Imagine that the Messiah of the Christian is the real one because it's very clear the timing according to prophecy of uh, Isaiah 9, uh, Daniel 9, we're going to speak about it in detail. And if you recover that part of that understanding and putting into one of the very high prophetic sealed book, and now is revealed because the time of the end is there, you will find a lot of things that you need to know about the war that you are in, about the condition of what's happening around you into the Middle East, the condition of Iran and all that. You know, like last week I was preaching and, uh, and we had a guy which was, a few times, you know, we sit together, spoke about the things of God, and he rejected too much. But he was standing until I finished my preaching because he was interested to know about the things of the day. So here is, I encourage every Christian to be saying, because we have in details in the book what is going to happen day by day, minute by minute, who and who. Just need to read with the opening eyes with the Holy Spirit. So these are the things and, and the time and seasons of God. And last week we spoke about the seven years of captivity of Israel and why it was. So please log in my previous video and listen to it because God said that there will be seven years of captivity. He was re, uh, recollecting back, I don't know what's the English word, for the Sabbath, 
the Jewish people didn't do the Sabbath as the way they of rest of the Lord. They didn't give rest to the land. And God take every, uh, you know, per year. So he was doing that and, and enter through the captivity because the land cannot be cul cultivated while Jews are away. So the land was taken by force because of the captivity, seven years captivity, God is calling for his Sabbath, the Sabbath of the land. So Christians are very smart and think, you know, by dropping the Sabbath, they are cool, they are not. But I don't want to go into that direction now because I want to speak more about the prophecy of Daniel. But what we know about this prophecy that there is a kingdom which is going to be an eternal kingdom. It's not going to uh, go to an end. And he's saying here, kingdom and dominion, the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. This is the name that we took here, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall serve and obey him. So every word about that kingdom is spoken into the book of Daniel. There is here the anointing of the Messiah. There is the anointing of the Messiah. This is the way I see he was anointed. Um, and then the cut of the Messiah in this prophecy. And in very short, uh, this is what happened here. Uh, there is a prophecy from the time that the, the word is prophesied or said. There will be 62 weeks till the, the, the Messiah will be cut off. Not for himself. And then there will be things happening. We're going to get into the prophecy. So this 62, he said 62 weeks. We have here 69. Then one week, one week. And, and uh, the problem of this prophecy is uh, if what they say is right, we're supposed to have 2,000 years from Christ. Uh, he was cut. This is wrong. That's why I never I was able to prophesy. But the Bible here is saying one day in the Bible prophecy equal to one year. That's why they get for uh, um, 70 years of uh, besieged or captured. Uh, and he said it into a few places. We can have here number 14 and Ezekiel. I discussed that in my previous teaching. I have appointed you each day for a year. So 70 years, because there is 70 weeks uh, of uh, uh, Sabbath that have been missed by the Jews. And there is, uh, after I describe it next time, uh, last time I entered in, I found the video. It's like the internet bring you whatever you're talking about. And I found a guy who's recalculating in a way incredible, incredible that Jews cannot deny that the coming of a mess the Messiah was prophesied about it and he come exactly as it was said. Um, and there is here a second key. There is a, a zero year. You know, when you get to 1099 um, and then 2000, this year is not counted. So with every detail, this, calculation of this prophecy was said so they rub or they put a cross on the cross they said no that's not the messiah and because of their denying they are missing very important things uh that is important for them to know nowadays and know they know where they are from what's gonna happen so let's go into um but then here uh the prophecy lot of time they have time and time and half a time uh, in the english is not very clear time and times but in the arabic is time two times and a half time so it's two and one is three and a half time is repeated daniel 7 daniel 12 revelation revelation so this like the the sealed book of daniel it's a sealed book and it's revealed into the book of revelation so the book of revelation is not a sealed book at the book of Daniel is the sealed book. And the sealed book of Revelation open it for us. But anyway, the church, the, the, the early church couldn't understand everything because everything should be sealed to the time of the end when God will explain and give us an ability to understand what is written. So we can, you can see here at least, you know, two Daniel, two Revelation about that time and time and time and half which are the three and a half years of the tribulation. 
um, and uh, we're gonna go for, uh, I'm gonna drop this for now and, and, and we go from here. This is a very good question uh, that you guys ask. I ask, everyone ask, and the disciple asked Jesus in the first chapter of the book of Acts. When they therefore were uh, come together, they asked him, and him is the Lord Jesus, will you not, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So all about the kingdom and all about the restoration of the kingdom to Israel. And Jesus said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the season. My first part of the message, which I put it later, is the times of the season that we are missing. And we play into it or allow to be played uh, into it as Christians. And that's why we do not know. And we are not sure. And that's why the Jewish now are totally, uh, you know, going into kind of blindness. So, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times of the season, which in the father has put in his own power. So he appeared to them and they, they asked him. And guess what? This is the same question that Daniel asked the prophet. Daniel was weeping, was fasting, was doing long prayer and asking God about Israel and the end of the trouble that Israel are into, into it. And he's been asked twine, ta two times. So how long are we going to have that discrimination? How long the people will be rejected? How long you promised the Messiah to come and he didn't come? Daniel asked that two times. And, and you can see here, and uh, Daniel 12, what did he say? Six. And he said to the man, there was an angel who appeared to him on the, riv on the river. And uh, the man was clothed in linen, and he said, which was upon the waters of the river. How long shall it be? the end of these wonders same exactly question that everyone has in his heart and the disciple asked jesus about and then two verses after he said and i heard but i understood not he was not he heard he gave him a question an answer or but he couldn't understand the prophecy and the meaning of it then I said, oh, my Lord, he's talking to the angel, that, that the river in front of you into the white and black picture, two angels on each side of the river, and that angel who first appeared to him, what shall be the end of these things? So Daniel wanted to know, when are you going to restore Israel? When are you going to give the glory back, restore again the kingdom to Israel? That's the cry of the disciple and the cry of the children of God. Uh, but it's more cry for Israel. And Daniel on that time was really, really asking the angel. And the angel uh, answered him beautiful things. Uh, he had a, a, a vision in the night. I saw the night vision. And uh, and behold, yeah, we go for the prophecy, but I'm just telling you about what is in the book of Daniel that is given to us. Uh, like a son of man. See here, this look like a son like a human so that's why again another cause why the book of daniel is not considered a book of prophecy because he's describing jesus as the son of man or the messiah is the son of man who came into the cloud exactly as it's written and prophesied that he will come on the cloud with his angels so it's amazing when you see how the old meet with the new of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near to him before him the ancient of days of course is god uh, the father and there was given to him dominion glory and a kingdom and all that all people nation and language should serve him his dominion is an everlasting so daniel here have all those things said to him there will be you know when they have that opposition of uh, uh, the father don't have a son and all that craziness that they have here is a very very clear prophecy saying to them that uh, one looked like a son of man like human and he came on the cloud and sent before the father and he was given a kingdom no jokes about this but delete the prophecy will deprive you from what's going to happen in the end because Daniel asked it was written in much detail, but it was sealed. He cannot understand it. John came and make it easier 
but still to the end. And God, Jesus didn't answer them, it's going to be tomorrow or after. They thought that like, Jesus died and after three, four days, he raised from the death. They thought the things will be the same. And uh, when uh, Apostle Paul was talking to them, I said, oh, don't be crazy about the coming, second coming of the Lord. This should happen then, 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 then in the book of Timothy. Timothy 1 and Timothy 2. He said again to him in, in Daniel 2, uh, in that day, in the day of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, the kingdom that we are talking about, restoring the kingdom to Israel, and uh, which shall never be destroyed. The kingdom shall be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces. He's talking about the, the vision of that uh, big statue that Daniel had and uh, in pieces and consume all this kingdom and it shall stand forever. I was listening to a guy who was, you know, um, telling about that statue that, or that uh, dream that was not said by Nabuchodonosor, the king, and he wants someone to tell him his dream. And all of us, uh, you know, like really uh, look at the prophecy into the generation before us and we repeat like the parrots. But into the light, that's not true. It's not all oh, the kingdom of the Persian, the kingdom of the Greek kingdom of whatever, no, here is the word is saying that it consumed all this kingdom. So on that time, you know, that rock is going to destroy all the kingdom. So the interpretation of the dream of Nebuchadnezzar was wrong about all the previous generation. It's not the Persian and the um, Persian uh, uh, and the Latins and Romans, Romans and not. This is the, uh, it was not my revelation. I cannot get the credit into this someone explain it and say aha this is good so what is here the kingdom shall not be left to others but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever they're trying to tell us that the latin the the romans empire is continuing and revived and all those things it's old uh um you know, old revelation. They are not having the revelation that we have here now. So Jesus is coming. It's not going to be secret, but it's going to be surprise to the people who are unprepared. Every eye will see him. And this is coming from the book of Revelation. He say, and behold, he comes with the cloud, same word, cloud. Every eye shall see him and they also which pierce him. You know, that's the same prophecy of the last chapter of Zechariah. When they see the piercing of the Messiah, piercing him, and all the kindred of the earth shall wail because of him. And in Zechariah, taking it in details, tribe by tribe was wailing because Jewish will see people as a nation and they will receive him all together in once. It's not going to be a secret, but it's going to be a surprise. Today, if you listen to the preaching, Please do not delete the, the coming, the cut of the Messiah, because this is a secret of the, the, the book of, Revel uh, of uh, Daniel, which when you delete it, all what is coming is for you unknown and unpredicted. But you receive the book, one of the very highest book, it's the only book is sealed, not the book of Revelation, because you can't call him book of Revelation and it's sealed. We just don't want to do a bit of effort to understand the book of Revelation is very easy. Divided into three parts. The first five chapters, the last four chapters, and in the middle. Study the first five and first four in one time. You will ha say hallelujah all the time. And then the middle one are the things of the tribulation, which is not concerning the children of God. Simple as that. If you do that division, you will love that book. It's not a, a sealed book, it's a revealed book, book of revelation of Jesus Christ. Now I'm just putting the revelation here, the, the seventy week prophecy of the book of Daniel. We read it word by word. There are 70 weeks are determined up, upon your people and upon the holy city. So this is for the Jews. I want you to put that in your mind because I was really not convinced why there is a gap. Why is there a gap? The church time is not your people. He's talking here to the Jews. The, the people of Daniel are the Jews. 
So the 70 weeks are determined upon your people and upon this, the holy city, Jerusalem. And that is, um, you know, like you can see, six reason, the purpose of this prophet, to finish transgression, no more sin, and to put end to the sin and to atone for wickedness. That's what did exactly Jesus on the cross and to bring the everlasting righteousness, righteousness of the Lord and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most high. Like you sh I show you, Jesus has to be anointed. Then uh, in, in few, next verse, he will be cut to anoint the most high. How the, and know therefore and understand. That part of understanding is given us into this generation um, from the going forth of the commandment. This is the king, Zardar Taxi, his name or something in uh, in Israel 7. We may have time to read it or maybe not. He gave a command to restore Jerusalem and ask anyone not by pressure if he is goodwill to go back to Jerusalem, if he is goodwill to go and donate and help the into the restoration of the of the kingdom there, he is welcome to go. It's not force. It's not pushing them out of uh, where they are. It's not. And people. So when he start to give that order from that moment. This is the beginning of the 70 weeks prophecy. We'll see the details in a picture now. So from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince, oh, the Messiah of the world, Salvatore Mondi, the savior of the world, shall be seven weeks. And then this uh, three scores and two, which means 62 weeks, mm. right? The street shall be built again and the wall and, and there will be a troublous some times, the tribulation, the trouble of Jacob. And then in the next two verses say, and then here is the most important part. We need to know this for the future coming. So this part is why I divide it. It's from it's 24, 25, 26, 27. I just cut the, the verse to make it a little bit understand. Jesus came. He finished the transgression and sin and wickedness. He brought an everlasting righteousness. And, and, and Daniel sealed the prophecy. It's not for today. And this is to anoint the Most High. And who anoint Jesus was this woman for his burial. People wanted to say that uh, Bon Jean the Baptist, Baptist anoint him. Let them say as they like. Uh, God bless them, but uh, the, the baptism in water is not an anointing. Anointing has to be with oil. And the lady who anointed on his body, you know, uh, it was even his body, the whole body. I was surprised with this picture and uh, I really like it uh, because I feel like truth is good. See, here is say for the, she had poured his, this ointment on my body. A very strange picture, you know. I, I don't know if you like those pictures. Probably, you know, read it in. Uh, but anyway, I just like the picture. It's very well done, the face of Jesus. It's poured ointment on my body. It's not only on his head. She did it for my burial. And and if you find that uh, word, you know, it's not just perfume. It's an oil. This is in Hebrew. And sakabat tib ala gasadi in agli takfini. I don't want to make men angry with me. Uh, but he was not anointed by, like, you know, uh, the anointing that we expect. He was anointed before his burial. Um, going back to our prophecy here. But this is here, 26 and 27, the main thing. After three score and two weeks, three score, it means 20. Three times 20. You know, when you say the word dozen, means 12 score it means 23 scores three twenties and two which means 62 shall messiah be cut off look at the beauty of every word of this prophecy but not for himself why well, didn't say for his people because he cut for the whole world he was not cut for himself this is the crucifixion that we show you and the people of the prince this is the antichrist shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end shall be with a flood and a war. Flood 
and a war. So those are all prophetic because this is something yet to come. Um, and, and the Jews said, oh, it's already done and all the prophecy already done and finished. You can say that and miss what is coming because it's not important what happened. As more important and what going to happen to us. To so all prophecy, part of it happened before and part of it will happen again. Um, so, um, and then he said, there will be an end of the world, desolation are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant. And that covenant here today is very important because this is a treaty that the Jews will sign with the Arabs very, very soon. So Armageddon is still after, you know, the signature of the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, this is the three uh, time that we say three and a half uh, time and time and time again. Time in singular, time in plural mean two and half a time means three, two and one, three and half, three and half years. Uh, the midst of the week, there be the sacrifice of the oblation to cease and the overspreading of the abomination, which shall make it desolate uh, even until the consummation that determined shall be poured upon to desolate. So this is exactly the description of the, the, the troubles time, troublous time they're speaking about, the trouble of Jacob. The Christian call it the time of tribulation, which is the prince will come, sign a covenant into the meek one week, and then he will break that by. Uh... So here is um, the, the study. Uh, it's 69 weeks of prophetic years. Why 69, not 62? Uh, here is the 70 weeks of Daniel. Maybe this one or the other one. There is 49. Here is the, the, the king, the Iranian king or the Persian king go and rebuild the he give the order to them it took 49 years to build the temple so this is 49 years this is here 62 years uh, as the prophecy was telling us so this is all 483 uh, and as we said you know a year for uh, a year 40 uh, nine, seven times seven, 49. And, and he said, so, so 490 years. This is what we are calculating. But with this one here, we have one week. So 49 plus 473 is not 490, it's 483. There is seven, uh, uh, seven missing, seven weeks missing, uh, which is the last one. But here, 49 divided by 7 is 70 weeks of Daniel. Uh, look with me. We're going to say it again and again. So here we have uh, the 69 weeks, which uh, 49, 7 times 7. One of them here part onto the building of the temple. And then the rest of it until the, the, the Messiah was cut. That's exactly what happened. The cutting of the Messiah. That's why this prophecy was, uh, you know, deleted. But then come the tribulation here, which is the last week. But what is missing here, they call it the church age. And they say to you that this church is, is can be any number. And I never accept that into my, you know, uh, mess. What do you mean? We're already 2,000 years into the church age. But I think he is speaking to his people, like I, I highlighted in the beginning. So that church is, is not his people. It's not the Jewish people. So you're going for this one, the 49 plus the 434 till the, the Messiah is cut, plus the seven years of the tribulation, make it to the 490, which is the seven weeks of Daniel prophecy. Be seven weeks. Uh, see the prophecy here? Yeah, the 70 weeks is then separated from the 69 weeks by a long period of time. This is here the problem that we cannot understand. Known into this, the people of dispensation, they call it the church age. Then will come the 70th week 
does not uh, begin until the end of the church age, when the people of God will leave, which called the rapture. And then finally will come that last week, those last seven years uh, for the future Antichrist to come and to oppress the, the, the Jews, to bring you know, a period of tribulation over the whole world, three and a half, uh, uh, as we said. But this is here the, the prophetic gap. Can you see that? So here is the 69 weeks, and this is the last week. 69 and 1 will be 70. Those are the 70 weeks of the prophecy of Daniel. But what this one here, it's the church is a mystery not revealed to Daniel. But we can see it into the book of Ephesians 3, 4, and 10. Oh, this one for me was ununderstood. But they reject this prophecy, which is very precise, because from the time that that uh, Iranian king or that Persian king give the command till the cutting of the Messiah, which is the cross, is exactly 79 weeks, missing the last week of the tribulation. Cannot be precise as, as that. And even the Jews didn't deny it. But they said, you know, the interpretation of it that uh, the week after, la 70 after, 70 years after the temple was damaged and the end of this prophecy. Like everyone said the prophecy passed already. And they like to dumb that prophecy. But it's important for you to listen and revive this prophecy because it's talking to you about the end time and what can happen and which nation and all that. So the full, the, the book of prophecy, of Daniel is full of details. Into, you need that part because this part yet to come. From the going forth of the commander to restore and build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince. Where is your Messiah, the prince? When the guy said that prophecy, when is your Messiah coming? If you dumb this prophecy, good. It's up to you, dumb it. Delete it as you like. But where is the Messiah, the prince then? He didn't show up 5,000 years. That's why it, it doesn't go for that calculation. But I mean, uh, this is something very, very important for the Jews. So I pray that for every, especially the people around uh, Netanyahu, as I heard, they are pushing him for that final war. They want him to answer back and all that because they want the coming of the Messiah. The thing is, you are not ready. Jewish people, you never received your Messiah. The way that you can, you will receive it as we saw into the prophecy of Revelation and Zechariah 14. And when you see the piercing, it's gonna be too late. That be barbecue for all flesh. And this is the only way that you recover as a nation. But today, if you open your eyes, I'm just meditating on this. And I talked to, spoke to the Iranian uh, guy who's doing all those trouble, the leader of the Iranian nations and uh, to Netanyahu, all those people. You are not ready. Your people are not ready. And guess what? Even Putin looked like the most evil guy of all. He's in the Christian faith. Either he do right or, or wrong, you know? He is prophesy. And I want so many people going to get upset with me saying that. But I was just thinking, aha, he is confessing, you know, uh, Christ. I don't know if I have a picture for him on this. Confessing the Christian faith and, and uh, yeah. And he was baptized and he's doing this and all doing that. So he is not into the position of the Muslim and the Jews who deny their, their uh, Messiah. Look at this here. Daniel 11, he shall enter. Look at this one. And now he's telling you exactly details. He shall enter into the Santa Christ into the glorious land. What's the glorious land to you? Jerusalem and many countries. And he will be overthrown, uh, but this shall escape. Look at those nations who will escape from the terrorism of uh, the Antichrist. Edom, Moab, and Ammon. Edom, Moab, and Ammon are Jordan. If you know the, the Middle East, this is Israel, this is Egypt. That triangle is Israel, and all these are Jordan. Ammon, Moab, this is going to be 
saved, but Egypt will not be saved. And he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the country, the land of Egypt shall not escape, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold, silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt. But the Libyan and Ethiopian shall be at his steps. So he, Egypt, it will be separated from all those nations around. The Jordanian will be saved. That will not be uh, attacked by uh, this guy. Uh, and the uh, Libyan and Ethiopian will be uh, hit by him. Egypt will be, um, I, I heard someone who was saying a prophecy, which I really like. So that's not, again, my revelation. But God bless who said it. I don't know who he was. Uh, but I share it. The Daniel 19. Because all of us, we think that the Messiah will come on the book of uh, Zechariah 14 when he put his feet on the mountain olive and he split and all those things and they will see him and spirit of God will fall upon them. Spirit of grace and supplication and see the wound. But listen, the beginning of the chapter 19, they say that the uh, the Lord is coming swiftly. Means Sonia Nemchi. Uh, he comes swiftly, come quickly to Egypt. So he will be visiting Egypt probably before he go to the Mount of Olive. I don't know. But Egypt will be tortured uh, financially in a great deal. But he said, you know, and then we'll see that he is hitting them and healing them there will be the revival in egypt this is a real uh, revival will happen to the egyptian which i believe in my face many of the muslim over there in this nation have been islamized by force and they have original they've been originally christian they will return to their own faith uh, so this is a big revival happened to egypt i don't see revival much into the end time but this is definitely, I've seen the book of Revelation and of the Revelation in 19 of the book of um, Isaiah in a different eye. That Christ may pass by Egypt before go to Jerusalem into the Mount of Olive and he will come swiftly, quickly. He will convert, you know, all the trouble happening into, um, uh, you know, the, the, the very, very critical financial situation that will be really like you see here all the power all the gold and all the silver and all the precious things of egypt he will take them there will be really financial difficulty for the egyptian but then the lord will redeem them to him and that special guy who was talking about this prophecy uh, revealing it he said uh you think oh what is happening america and uh, you know this one and that one but god if god Focus on the Middle East, on these special nations, because the main things will happen on those nations. No doubt about it. If you wanted to mention America, he would. God have everything is his knowledge from the beginning. So those nations have special things to happen to them. And, and we, as we know, which I said many times, Egypt is the third of the land of God, as with Assyria, the, as the, the revelation of Egypt will go to Assyria and then will go finally to Israel. I love this prophecy. It's out of my uh, topic, but I felt I refresh you with this. So looking here into this prophecy, this nation will be saved, but Egypt will be totally, uh, you know, all the treasure of Egypt. I am going forward and back, uh, not in order, I guess, uh, but... <clears throat> So we were here, you know, into uh, the three segments that we spoke about into the prophecy of the 490 years, and then which are the 49 years on the time to rebuild Jerusalem after the decree of the king Artaxerxes, whatever, of Persia. 49 years. You saw the picture, now you see the word. And 443 till the anointed one arrived. Messiah, the king, anointed. And then the seven years, uh, which are the final week, which is yet to come, the final, uh, the week of the tribulation, the trouble of Jacob. You need to take the part of the anointed one and the cut off of the Messiah 
So you be pre prepared for the seventh year. I'm speaking that to the Jews and the Arabs who wanted to push the button and destroy the world, you know, and you think, oh, you're smart. You're not a kid who has a toy. Um, and as for me, I, I'm ready to meet my Messiah, but are you ready to meet the Messiah? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because the Messiah came and he was cut off after 49 and 443 years from the decree of Arta, Te Texas. This prophecy is very accurate per year, per day. And even the Jews couldn't deny it. But they cut the book and, and, and deleted totally because they're idiots. If they're smart, they will open that book and now to start to read it into the light of the New Testament and get the benefit out of it because it's speaking about the war which yet, which soon to happen. And then he said here, uh, the, sorry, I didn't mean Jews are idiots. I apologize. That's not language which I should use, but the thing is, uh, it's arrogance or it's blindness or whatever. But time to drop all those things because we're really talking about a final war which finished the world. So don't take, oh, the Christian who did this and this. Don't do that. The truth is the truth from any kind and any angle of the world. I don't mean, you know, you know, I love the Jewish people and I love the, uh, the Muslim world. And I want them all to find the Messiah before the time will be ended. So I apologize for that word. But here is the anointed one would be cut off. It's talking about the resurrection. Don't delete this prophecy. Revive it again. Study it again on the light of maybe the Jesus of the Christian is the Messiah. And we still wanted to oppose him. Maybe for the Muslim world, this prophecy is concerning us. And we have to read it to see what happened on those nations. And let's go on the side of the winner. You know, that guy who was just last Saturday last week, he is not, you know, we went a few times into conversation and religion and religion. I would really pour my heart so he can receive Christ. But he was standing on his feet till the end of my preaching because I was telling about the things yet to come. And I said about the 70 years of uh, besieged or uh, captured, of uh, uh, Nabuchadnezzar, he captured the, the Jewish people and destroyed the temple. It was as was prophesied, God is sincere about his saying, 70 years. And now we're talking about the 70 weeks of the prophecy of uh, uh, book of Daniel. And then the summary 70 weeks prophesy points to Jesus' atonement for the sin and set for the stage of the millennium kingdom, the millennium that we are waiting. So it's a powerful testament to God's plan unfolding through the history. Please don't deny it. It's amazing detail, you know, and uh, God has a timetable that you keep always in schedule. And uh, you look to the return of our Messiah instead of denying him, God don't have a son. And I'll show you, you know, into the prophecy of Daniel when he said, the son, look like a son of man coming and standing next to the ancient of days. So those are all treasure that you have into your book, not the Christian book. Don't delete them because of hard hardness or blindness or arrogance or whatever. It has the salvation of your soul and the others. So receive those words into the humble heart. So this is Ezra 7, uh, 13, that when he make the decree, you know, you could read it. We don't want to lose time in it. Uh, and here is the people who speak about that the prophecy was full before. There is the guy, Antiochus Epiphanes, he desecrated the temple. And this is why, you know, the people who like to say that all prophecy were fulfilled and the Jews, you know, uh, did that. It's up to you to study it that way. And uh, they come to you, the coming of the Messiah as surprise. Like I said, it's not secret, but it's going to be on surprise for you. Uh, so he had, at that time, the lamb was uh, sacrificed twice daily. And he came here on this year, as you can see, the king uh, of the Greek uh, ruled Palestine and put end of the 
sacrifice. Well, this is the sacrifice of God, but the other one was the abomination of desolation. And they said they get, you know, a pig or something on the um, on the altar and stuff like that. But let me tell you, uh, we spoke about this uh, prophecy and uh, character of this guy, which is the Antichrist coming. He spoke um, marvelous things against God of God, gods. He's going to be a big blasphemer. Very arrogant, very uh, exalt himself, magnify himself about every ever God. So he's like the pharaohs. He think himself a god or something. Um, and then uh, he's neither shall he regard the gods of his father. Uh, he could come from a religious background. He will not respect it, nor the desire of a woman. So he may be. Uh, homosexual, maybe don't like women, I don't know. No regard of any God, for he shall magnify himself above all gods. And, and here his father, uh, all right, but he will introduce a God that we never heard of. Have you all ever heard of God of forces? I never heard of it. But the prophecy is saying, but in his uh, estate shall he honor the God of the forces. A God whom his father knew not. It means all the past people never knew about God of the forces. That he shall be honored with gold, silver, and precious stone and pleasant thing. Thus shall he do in the most stronghold uh, with a strange God, someone not known. A strange God whom he uh, uh, called the God of forces. Whom he shall acknowledge and increase in glory and he shall cause them to rule over many and here again is the second time we spoke about that division of the land so israel will be divided not now it will be divided into the time of uh the antichrist while he will come this is a plan that come again and again and and uh, we get last week the prophecy that god will be very mad punishing the people who divide his land but this guy will uh, and then we can hear he shall enter into the glorious land and many countries. Yeah, we spoke about this part before. And, and where he going to stay? Uh, and he shall plant the tabernacle of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Glorious holy mountain in Jerusalem and the seas is probably between the Red Sea and the Mediterranean because he put it in plural. That's where he's going to put his tab tabernacle or his place of dwelling too much detailed he said they said oh it's a book about dreams that's not a dream it's too much details fitting into the theology or the uh the war story of this time not ignored not to be ignored not to be ignored so here is the mediterranean and here is so he will be sitting his throne into that area between here and here and here, I don't know how, all that part. I was just really trying to see if that prophecy really fit. Uh, I Google into the internet, Nabuchaz Nasser uh, conquered Syria, Egypt, and Judah. I was asking if he ever conquered uh, Jordan. No, he didn't. But did he conquer Egypt? Uh, he didn't uh, conquer Egypt. Nabuchaz Nasser ever, never conquered Egypt. Yeah. The contrary, on the fourth scene, Nabuchaz Nasser failed to his attempt to conquer Egypt. Following his favor, it is quite possible that Egypt re regained some control over the thousand. So Babylonian, however, never succeeded in taking Egypt. So if you wanted to make yourself blind, go to the history. But don't fool yourself. They never succeed in taking Egypt, but the Iranian did, which remained independent power until it was conquered by the Persians. Egypt was conquered by the Persian, but not by the Babylonian. So that prophecy is not uh, yet fulfilled or whatever. Uh, the Babylonian captivity, they had the con conquest of Judah, but never of Egypt. So here is, again, I, I put that the time of the gap. That's a Christian time, which can be any time. But this is here, the building, the word of Artaxax, the king, 
Iranian, Persian, 49 years they built the temple. Here the Messiah was cut. After he was anointed, he was cut. Messiah cut off means he died, means crucify. Uh, Arta Zerzex, that's his name. And then here is the sacrifice, the seven years of the tribulation. Very interesting. And the calculation was very difficult because that time gap. This is not a Jewish time. This is a churchy time. And again and again, uh, same things. Uh, I don't know if we have to stop here. Uh, but I just wanted to, you know, um, quickly say, you know, that um, it's all about the timing of God. And uh, I start to speak about it, you know, that there's not going to be more capacity for you to take after this long uh, detailed. Uh, maybe we take it next time. It's how the timing of God is broken. The time that Jesus was asked by his disciple when gonna be the, the the time of this to happen? So that's mm -hmm. sealed book. But you, O oh Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. It's a sealed book. Uh, uh, then who was the prophet during the time? Ezekiel and Daniel were on the same time. Daniel is not present into the Hebrew Bible canon of the prophet, where its mighty arg will be expected to fit which was closed 200 BC, rather Daniel forms a part of the Katubim. Like I said, it's not a Nabiim, which are the book of prophet. Katubim is the writing and is added later on. So they despite the book of prophecy uh, by ignorance. And uh, yeah, we're gonna talk next time about the sealed uh, book or, or we should say the sealed book here. Uh, that sealed book is very, very, uh, in, uh, like many times is sealed, is sealed. And, and here, this part is very important in Daniel 2, uh, Daniel 12. And he said, shut up the vision for it shall be for many years. It's a sealed book. Daniel 8, Daniel 12, Daniel 12 again, Daniel is, uh, all these are, and then we can find here the, the sealed uh, things, sealed, 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 you can see repeated. But here is one of the very beautiful part, which I heard it from that guy, you know, the other day. God bless him who was, uh, who is he. Uh, in, the, in the beginning, I thought the knowledge, or I heard the teaching about the knowledge shall be increased. We think this is a computer knowledge. We all of now have this AI who tell us more than we have ever heard from Google and whatever, but no. Uh, that guy who was interpreting this part of the prophecy uh, give a light on that part. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. So it's not even in the time of the book of Revelation 2,000 years ago. So this is our time. And God will raise some people to disclose uh, uh, this time. And they call them the, the people who can have knowledge. And you found it in 12 and, uh, and, but many shall run to and fro. He explained this one. And the knowledge shall be increased. Means like the people come and look at the side of the prophecy from that side. And then they look at it from that side. And then look at it. You know how you start, the scientists start to think of a, a topic or whatever and keep, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I really was very unconvinced about that gap of the Christian, into, uh, you know, gap of the church age. Until, you know, the word of God give me the revelation. He's talking about his people. The church are not his people. So those years and the last year, the, 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 the addition, and so it can be any time, the time of the church and my the revelation come to me. So this is here the way. People will think of the prophecy from different angles. Da, 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 da. No, 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 no. Run and to and fro. So you go, oh, think this way and maybe not this way. Think this way. You know how scientists think. This will be the way that people will have a revelation. And knowledge shall be increased. So many people will have the revelation of who is the Messiah in the end time. Because God don't want to bring wrath on men. He don't. Or women. 
or child or even his enemy. He don't want to bring, you know, his wrath. His wrath are unbearable, undescribable. Until into the only place that the book of Revelation sealed. Uh, let me show it to you so you can believe me. You know, we have the, the books which are revealed, the seven books of, uh, there is seven seal that only Jesus who can open. And as you open it, it's all horrible things happening to humankind. But then the seven trumpets, another horrible seven things. And then another, the bowl of the wrath of God. But then after that, into the book of Revelation, he said uh, that the... the uh, what is it? Um, the lightning. What is the other word for lightning? Seal them. Because it's too much. People cannot take what is written in it. So what is written in it, even worse than the 21 horrible thing that we've been uh, revealed into the book of Revelation. God don't want to say what's going to happen on people on that time. So why do you want to have that? And see here, I was thinking about what can be sealed. Book can be sealed. Document of a king, of, co of course, can be sealed. But our spirit can be sealed. And we are sealed by the spirit of the living God. We are sealed. And in Corinthians, he say, who have also sealed us and give us the illness of the uh, spirit in our hearts. And another one is said, uh, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit. So your spirit is sealed. You're like a book, sealed. Very, very, you know, we have the seal, sealing of the ring of the king, like in Esther and all those things. But your, your spirit is sealed by the spirit of the living God. So brother and sister, today the Lord wants to open that ceiling uh, of your spirit and pour of the Holy Spirit on it. And he wants to open that book of prophecy for the Jewish people, for the Christians, and, and for the Muslim world to see where they fit into these prophecies. Because that book belongs to you. It is written for you. I don't care what is your background. That treasure that Daniel was writing the things and he said, I couldn't understand. Can you please explain to me? And he begged him twice, begged the angel to tell him when again and this happened. And he said to him, it's sealed till the end. God has a plan and he will finish his plan in time. Seal the book because the time is not yet. Many will shall run to and fro and the knowledge of people will come. So I pray today that the knowledge of the Lord will come upon you. And those words which you may not like to hear will hassle you in a way that you give your spirit. The Holy Spirit will open you and seal you to eternity and you'll be child of God. And I'll meet you one day in the heavenly place. The Lord's disciples say, will you, uh, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said, the time or the season. Next time, brother and sister, we'll talk about the time and the seasons and how they are important. We talk about two important texts: the seventy years of uh, uh, besieged of of uh, of uh, the Jews people, the captivity, the seventy years of captivity, and today we spoke about the seventy weeks of Daniel, the sealed book. But next time, we're going to speak more about the time and the season that the Father has put into his own power. How is this important from day one till today? May we meet next time. May God bless you mightily and open your heart so you don't resist the truth and embrace it no matter what your background is. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.